Oh, what's going on, you filthy animals? On today's show, the World Series finally is set. The Padres may have found their next pitching coach. And with all the discourse over this NBA's like 75th anniversary list and whatnot, it started making me think about how that relates to baseball and how, guys, upcoming soon, we're going to have a lot of MLB Hall of Fame discourse, guys. All that and more on the Lockdown Padres podcast. Guys, you know what it is. Here we go. You are Locked On Padres, your daily San Diego Padres podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Locked On Padres podcast, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for Monday, October 25th. As always, I am your host with sometimes occasionally, but certainly not always the most, Javier Reyes. You might be familiar with some of my baseball-related work at places like Baseball FYI, Friars on Base, Off the Bench Baseball, or just baseball. Shout out to the shirt that I'm wearing. You might be able to see it if you're watching the YouTube. That's right, guys. If you're watching the YouTube, uh, Locked On Padres, subscribe there for sure. Not only can you see this awesome shirt that I'm wearing. Seriously, it's just Baseball for everyone, baby. Let's do it. Uh, and then also you can follow me on Twitter at Java Peno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O, or at L-O underscore Padres for the Twitter account for the show, obviously. And there's a lot of good memes and fun stuff on there, too. Um, yeah. What, what, what can I say? Look, a little bit late of an upload. What can I tell you? But first of all, if you are listening first, thank you for making Lockdown Padres your hashtag first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. On today's show, guys, we are discussing... I, I, I mean, is the, the World Series matchup a set? You want from me? I know this is Lockdown Padres, but you got to talk about it at least a little bit. And we have to hail, we have to praise just a little bit, just a little bit, the Atlanta Braves for knocking off those dastardly LA Dodgers. And then some interesting news coming out of Padres Insider Camp, which is that we may have ourselves a new pitching coach. It hasn't been, the announcement hasn't been made officially yet as of the time of this recording, but we're going to be talking about that and who he is, at least just uh, kind of my preliminary thoughts on the whole thing, because there's a lot of hirings that are going to take place, a lot of turnover, a lot of different things that are going to happen this offseason. So that's going to be fun. And then just a quick little, like, uh, uh, not a, maybe a little bit of a tangent. I know you guys, long-time listeners, are probably not unfamiliar with my long-winded tangents, but uh, just talking about how I've been very annoyed by this kind of, NBA discourse about their 75th list. It reminds me of baseball discourse, not as bad as LB Hall of Fame discourse, but just to talk about that really quickly, because I want to get a hit. You know, MLB Hall of Fame discourse is going to be an absolute mess this upcoming fall and winter uh, when we start, when it starts heating up and what have you. So guys, let's get into it. So first of all, Saturday, before we even talk about it, you know, what my thoughts on the actual matchup, Dodgers falling to the Atlanta Braves. And you know who hits a big home run in this one, guys? You know, it's a big home run. Eddie Rosario. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, allowing Travis Darno and Eddie Adrianza to score a three run bomb, which puts them over the top. It was huge. Bottom of the fourth inning. Yes, AJ Pollock drives in a run too, but it does not matter. The Atlanta Braves are going to the World Series. I can't believe it. I, I genuinely can't believe it. It's look, there have been a lot more shocking things in the world. And you know why? Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's Dodgers slander time, all right? How many times have you guys heard me on this here podcast? We're at 80 episodes practically in already. It's nuts out here, you know? Can't wait till I get to 400. How many times in this podcast have I said, the Dodgers are a phenomenal organization. They're great. They're excellent. They have a dynasty. This idea that they are so much better than, like, I, I don't like how much everyone penciled in them. To the World Series. Shout out Bill Plaschke, you silly goof, saying that they were going to break the all-time record, all this stuff. My issue with this is great regular season team. Elite. Uh, probably the best in baseball for the past, uh, at least as long as I've been, you know, covering my team and then also just since, like, the decade, I'd say. Right? But I've how many times have I kept saying that I've always been annoyed by this idea that people keep writing in the Dodgers? All season they were doing that. In the offseason, when the Padres make their moves, they said – yeah, they did all that just to lose to the Dodgers in seven. Well, they just lost to the Braves, who didn't have a lot of players not on their team. Travis Darno, or no, Travis Darno was there. Was he? Hold on, give me one second. 
was Travis Darno on the team? Yeah, Travis Darno was there. He wasn't there for a lot of the season, but um, no Marcelo Zuna, no Ronald Acuna Jr. You might have heard of him before. No Mike Soroka. Max Fried was bad at the beginning of the year. Bunch of injuries. Like, they had a lot to overcome, too. That was a dumb article that came out on ESPN, by the way, that was saying that despite all odds, the Dodgers might, you know, how, how far can they push the Braves? I'm like, despite all odds, you have the highest payroll in baseball. You got gifted, like, in a fruit basket, Max Scherzer and Trey Turner at the deadline. What are you talking about against all odds? Give me a break. So that was annoying. And clearly, baseball wants the Dodgers in that World Series. Let me tell you. Let's just say, go look up them MLB scorecards. You know what I'm saying? Go look up them and see which how many games were in favor, uh, technically speaking, of the Dodgers. Just go look that up real quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but I just felt like, you know, we kept repeating this all season. Um, and especially all off season, my thing was, why are we ignoring tw- like everything that happens pre 2020? So 2019, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, just because they won the World Series in a, in a truncated season. It still counts. I'm not out here going to say the Mickey Mouse stuff. I'm not. Y'all could say that if you want. I'm just saying that that's always been annoying. Same thing goes for the Tampa Bay Rays. Excellent organization, but putting them in that S tier of amazingness that what they're doing is so great. It's like, how about you win a World Series first? Tampa, I'd argue, is even more of an uh, uh, overrated is a word I don't like using anymore, but even more of a uh, 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 praised organization in terms of what they've done for the sport sometimes that actually doesn't match what they've accomplished. You know what I'm saying? The, the freaking uh, Cleveland made a World Series too. Congratulations. So did Cleveland. You know, the Royals won one. You know, the, the, the Washington Nationals won one. Like there's plenty of other teams that have won before they've won the world series and then they got blew out by boston this year so that was my kind of thoughts on the dodgers being in there it is going to be braves astros and before you start commenting before you start saying that wow yeah mlb must really hate those ratings it's like who cares that's for them to worry about it's not like baseball's going anywhere guys you know what i'm saying the baseball ratings have been going down for years regardless dodgers red sox was one of the one it wasn't rated all that highly especially compared to what people thought i think that's because boston overvalues their fan base and how big they are as a market just a tad but you know, it wasn't as highly rated as a lot of people thought it was going to be. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, don't worry about the ratings. Who cares? I think this is a great matchup. I have to admit, Dodgers-Astros would have been fascinating just from a person who enjoys stories. I do think so. But I will say, Atlanta, good for them, man. Atlanta sports has had so many L's over the last, like, basically ever since they had the Olympics. <laughs> like, they've been just suffering nonstop L's uh, constantly. Uh, and we don't have to regurgitate that. Go listen to uh, Jake Mastriani, who now hosts the Locked On Braves podcast. I bet you he could tell you about all the Atlanta sports L's that they've had. But uh, I'm so happy for them. I'm happy for Freddie Freeman. He had a tough year last year, won the MVP and all that, had the whole COVID situation. That was amazing uh, for them to come back. And yes, it's awesome that they beat the Dodgers after falling to them last year in 2020, uh, just by having a 3-1 lead. So that is really awesome. I am happy for the Braves. And to a degree, the Astros... I have to admit, I'm, it's tantalizing the idea of them World Series, only because it would be like, well, what now? Are we still going to keep hating them? I think it goes back and forth. I think that on sub level, you have to be like, well, if you look at some of the tea leaves and look at some of the trickling down things and people are like, look, there are other teams that do some cheating and the Astros were just so brazen about it and they had to be like kind of the fall guy. There's just a lot of different things. To this. I'm not saying you have to like the Astros. I'm not even saying you have to not root against them like definitely root for the Braves it's more fun like I, I love the underdog and I love that the idea of them beating the supervillain and all that but like I do think people have to acknowledge that there's so many other things that teams do not just to cheat but things bad things that teams do I've talked about how Brandon Tobman the assistant GM of the Astros yelling at the female reporters about thank god we got Ozuna was unbelievably heinous and their response to that spoke to how messed up of an organization they are but they're not the only ones that's my only thing so I'm rooting for Correa exclusively I just want all the Puerto Ricans to do well. You know what I'm saying? Eddie Rosario for the Braves. I love it. I love all the Puerto Ricans who have been just showing out. Kike Hernandez of the Red Sox. Uh, Christian Vasquez had a walk-off homer of the Red Sox. Like, just insane, insane stuff. Correa had the most fun home run pimp that's happened this postseason. You know, with the wrist thing. It's my time or whatever he did. That was fun. So, I'm looking forward to the World Series as a baseball fan. Although, I do acknowledge that it is true. It's not the most 
incredible storyline matchup we've had in a while. You know what I'm saying? But for Atlanta sports, I'm happy for you guys. And hopefully the Padres can be there one day, guys. But before we finally talk about some more Padres stuff, don't get me wrong. We'll be talking about the World Series and stuff, doing a little bit of recaps if anything really, really notable happens. But before we get into some Padres talk, guys... I want to talk to you about a simple way to get all the entertainment you love without the hassle. DirecTV Stream brings you live TV and on-demand favorites like never before, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So stop waiting and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. Remember, that is DirecTV Stream at DirecTV.com. All right, guys, let's continue talking. Let's continue talking. Got to clap my hands right there. Bam, bam. All right, here we go. Thanks for making it again, though. Locked on Padres, your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Woo. All right, let's talk about some Padres news because this is Locked on Padres after all. Um, look, and, and maybe you skipped past the World Series recap. Maybe you were like, I don't even, I hate the Dodgers so much. I don't even want to hear them. Not even, not even a mention of them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and again, I've said this before on the podcast. I'll say it again. I really like that they lost. And the reason I like that they lost also is because I really think the side of Trevor Bauer and you getting rewarded with Max Scherzer it just doesn't sit right with me. I hated that. I hated that so much. And you lost. Goodbye. The end. Anyway, guys, let's talk about some Padres news. Um, it was reported first by Buster Olney that the Padres haven't picked their manager yet. Obviously, this was a tweet that came out. But according to sources, they are looking in on Ruben Nibla to be their next pitching coach. He's been the assistant pitching coach with the Indians. And Kevin AC kind of piggybacking off of that, he tweeted, this is considered all but a done deal. The hope is that bullpen coach Ben Fritz stays as well, which is very fun because I know Ben Fritz has become a little bit of a fun uh, sort of guy to root for amongst Padres prior faithful uh, Twitter faithful i should say um so that's really really cool i like that um that bed fritz hopefully will stay but my first thought on this indians perhaps you've heard of how good cleveland seems to be at churning out pitchers and getting the best out of their pitchers they're not tampa bay rays level necessarily but they're really really up there i mean after all remember the rotation that they had years ago they had Corey kluber Corey kluber was some like 15th round pick who's supposed who's supposed to just eat innings he was supposed to be, Corey Kluber, what Vince Velasquez was brought up to do for the Padres this year. You know what I mean? Just be a guy that you bring up every now and then on your team and be eat innings. And said he won two seance. You know what I'm saying? Danny Salazar, really talented pitcher. Uh, he didn't always put it together, but solid player. Carlos Carrasco, who looks like he might be a little bit, you know, chalked and not great anymore with the Mets. But, like, he was a great pitcher for a very long time. Um, you know, Shane Bieber, who's blown up. Uh, I like he's still, I know he's been a little bit distant, but he's young. I think he has a lot of potential. Then Mike Clevenger, who the Padres traded for. They've got all these pitchers all the time, man. I mean, they just find people. It's incredible. And Cal Quantrill, who the Padres traded over there. I'm not, I talked with some, some people and they were saying, don't be super freaked out about the Cal Quantrill thing. Don't get me wrong. Trading, I would love to have had Cal Quantrill on this team last year only because, only because the depth would have been nice. It would have been nice to be able to call up on a Quantrill uh, potentially to give us some good quality starts towards the latter half of the season, which is what we were desperately dying for. But again, with Quantrill, you got Mike Clevenger. If Mike Clevenger doesn't get hurt, we're not worrying about that. And I've also heard that, unlike Lamette, who seems like his shoulder is all messed up. I'm still not confident that Mike Clevenger will. I'm just not. I need to be shown that they're not going to mess up somebody uh, pitching wise that he'll recover perfectly. Uh, hopefully he does. And someone told me that I shouldn't be too, too worried about that. But even still, uh, I, I am bottom line. And the bottom line is this, though. I love what Cleveland's doing and I would love this higher. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that this is a nuclear change of direction, but I would argue that getting a pitching coach that's really enticing like this would be even more important than the manager. What's interesting that's going on with Major League Baseball right now when it comes to managers is that everyone's wondering how much say do managers after actually have. You know, Sitker over the, the Braves, he clearly, like, the, the decisions he makes, he's a feel guy, and I love that. I love the feel guys for sure. Not all the time, don't get me wrong, but I like it when you don't just have, you know, guys in U-Pen shirts that come into your, your clubhouse and, and look at, open a computer, run an algorithm, and the bar starts loading, and they're like, actually, yeah, you should take out Blake Snell despite the fact that he's having the best start of his career uh, in, the, in the World Series, right? So that stuff I don't like, but I like that, you know, he, 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 could, uh, he has a feel for managers, 
I'm wondering if they're starting to become a little bit obsolete. I'm wondering how much Kevin Cash really has a say. I'm wondering how much Dave Roberts has a say in. I'm just wondering that constantly. I'm not saying that I have inside information about any of those organizations. I'm a Padres guy after all, but it's it's definitely one of those things where you wonder now and then, like how much is our managers just going to be an extension of the GM? You know what I'm saying? And they're just going to be kind of clubhouse morale guys who can, that's it. Like that's that might be their destiny and what have you. So um, what I am also hearing is that um, experience might not be required for whoever gets the the next manager job. So that means that maybe if you got your hopes up for guys like Bruce Bochy, keep in mind, it could just be some random person that ends up being the Padres next manager, right? So keep that in mind. But back to Mr. Rubin, uh, I was talking to Jeff Ellis of Locked On Indians, and he was saying he was like, oh, my God, please don't take this guy from us. He said he was the guy in the minors for the Cleveland uh, Indians in terms of the pitching pipeline, kind of developing guys and whatnot. As roving coordinator, he worked with every arm who, is ha- who has had the success and mentioned explicitly by then. All was our pitching coach, but not in name due to Tito wanting his own dudes as coaches. So because Tito came back, we lose arguably the most important coach the Indians have. Just so you guys know, that's their current dude that's in place. But because, um, what's it called? Because this might happen. I'm just typing stuff there. I got a, a weird little notification in my thing. Um, what's it called? Uh, because of Terry Francona, which is obviously who. Why did I say that? Sorry, I was reading like the DM in the conversation I had directly. Terry Francona, because he stepped away, everyone was expecting that. Ruben might actually step in. Everyone's excited about him, all the things that he's done for Cleveland. But Terry Francona is probably going to come back to, after stepping away from the team for some mental stuff and what have you and kind of, you know, trying to you know, just, just step away. If you guys don't remember, uh, Terry Francona got a little bit of trouble because of the whole Mickey Calloway situation and some other stuff that he knew about, um, and didn't kind of report when it came to kind of, you know, off field sort of issues and what have you. So, uh, I would really like this hire. Like I said, I would dare to venture that this would be even more important than the manager dare to mention just because I like the idea of picking guys from organizations that have really, really awesome reps that have awesome stuff for, um, Cleveland that, that have developed all these pitchers and at least been in ahead of it. Unlike say some people were saying, Oh, probably just going to get, go get one of his guys from Texas. I mean, like, what has Texas done? You know what I'm saying? What are they, they What half a season of Kyle Gibson in terms of pitching? So I really like the idea of the hire. I really like the idea of the Padres looking around at just other teams that know how to get the best out of the rotation. And Cleveland has certainly done that. Um, hey, Shane Bieber, just look at Shane Bieber. He's one of the best pitchers of the year. I've always said and tried to propel the rumor that he's on the block and that the Padres should trade for him. I've been pushing this rumor, this totally real and legitimate rumor into the air for a while now. Um, so hopefully the Padres uh, do make this signing. AC says it's all but done. We're going to react to that uh, more with Jeff Ellis of Lockdown Indians if it does officially go through. And as Padres fans know, now this wasn't AC who did this, but as Padres fans know, close to a deal isn't always means it's going to be a done deal. You know what I'm saying? We learned that with Max Scherzer. So, uh, but bottom line is this: I'm very excited about the potential of it. It's not some world changing thing. This isn't like if they traded for Mike Trout or something crazy. But it is a sign of heading in the right direction and looking at teams who just seem to get the better out of their pitchers more often than we do. Uh, which is a big deal, especially with guys like Mackenzie Gore, who everybody's wondering about. He had a bad start the other day. Everyone's wondering. So I like it, guys. But before we kind of finish up this podcast, guys, let's take another break. Let's talk about the best protein bars in all the land, not just in Jersey, not just in San Diego, not just in Cleveland, not just in the – I would dare to venture in the galaxy, ladies and gentlemen. That's how good these are. They are, of course, the Built Bars, guys, soft and easy to chew, covered in 100% chocolate and a great variety of flavors – Coconut, cherry barcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate, some new flavors like blueberry muffin, Rocky Road, grasshopper cookie. They've got all these limited time flavors that pop up every now and then too. I guarantee you they're going to have more fun flavors for the holidays and whatnot. They're kind of like the Ben and Jerry's in a way of protein bars. Just always these new type of flavors. It's really, really great stuff, guys. And on top of all that, they are protein bars, which what does that mean? That means they're healthy for you. Check out the macros, 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only four to five grams sugar, and only four to five grams net carbs. Amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy, guys. So what are you waiting for? Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Remember, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. 
right, guys, we are back now talking fairly light episode of Lockdown Padres, guys. Thank you for making it your first listen. Hashtag first listen every day. Um, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. So I just wanted to talk about a more esoteric isn't the right word, but a more general kind of uh, broad topic when it comes to um, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, sorry, I just got another email on my, on, my, on my phone that's important that I'm looking at. Uh, when it comes to a broad topic that does have its um, stems and roots in baseball, and that's about the MLB Hall of Fame. And I want to just talk about this very, very quickly before we wrap up and basically how there's been a lot of discourse over the past few days about this NBA 75th anniversary list, the 75 greatest players or whatever. And a lot of the discourse has come from two guys, Dwight Howard and Clay Thompson. Dwight Howard, you could definitely argue, belongs on there. And then there's Clay Thompson, who's an awesome player, but it reeks of recency bias. You know what I'm saying? It reeks of like, look, this guy's been on the All NBA team like once or whatever it is. And like, he's an incredible player, but we're just talking top 75 of all time. And this relates to the Hall of Fame. My view on the Hall of Fame for the NBA is also like, I think the NBA, look, it's not going to offend me or anything like that, but it is kind of annoying that, you know, it's, how do I put this? I don't think it should just be everybody gets in that was a great player. I think you truly have to be some otherworldly thing to make the Hall of Fame. I do. I don't think Ben Wallace should have made the Hall of Fame, for example. And that relates to MLB because I think that we're going to have a lot of bad discourse come up uh, over the next coming months. And I think that in general, aside from MLB Hall of Fame stuff, it should be noted, guys, that just because someone isn't like raked in the top 10, just because someone is doesn't make a certain list, just because someone doesn't make MVP, just because someone doesn't make the all-star team. I think these things are hard. You know what I'm saying? It's not always a highway robbery if somebody makes it over the other person. You know what I'm saying? I said this with Jay Cronenworth back in, uh, what was it, back in like June before the all-star game, where I was saying, look, I think he should be in there, but I think that Ozzy Albies, like, is it really going to get you that mad if he makes it in over Jay Cronenworth? They're both really good players. And I know that some of the numbers said that Jay Cronenworth had had a bit, a little bit better of a season. But my thing was like the discrepancy just wasn't that great for me to be like, this is outrageous. Now, Gavin Lux of the Dodgers, that's total baloney, right? That has to be taken out of there. And Cronenworth did end up making the all-star team, by the way. But it's very like, I think that we do that as fans sometimes. We're always wondering where the our favorite player is. Hey, this guy was really great. Therefore, top 75. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, what's another one? Like Tracy McGrady never like won a playoff series and they put him on the top 75, which is, which is a little bit weird, right? And like, that's just how I view, feel about it a lot of times. I think that people need to acknowledge that there's a lot of players in this game. And when you're talking about the best players, this is this is just what's going to happen. You know what I mean? You're going to have moments where a really great player gets left off your off-time list, all-time all list. Andre Iguodala for baseball, you know, I, I'm trying to think of one, like a, like a Ken Caminetti. He was a great, great player. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, a, a tragically lost his life. And that's... That's, that's a very unfortunate. Go check out Joe Vasile's podcast, by the way. Uh, Secondary League, the whole his whole documentary on Ken Caminetti. It was really, really good. I had him on the podcast a while back. But um, that's just my take on that. Like, really, really good players is definitely what um, you can, I don't know, you can look for. Ah, I'm a little sluggish today for this podcast. I probably should have thought out this segment a little bit better, shouldn't I? Yeah, I probably should have. But it's all good, ladies and gentlemen. But we're still vibing. Um, so that was just kind of my, my perspective on that. When you see all these these players and lists, you look ahead at the Hall of Fame discourse, which is going to pop up. A lot of people are saying, you know, is Kurt Schilling going to make it? For the record, I think I, I genuinely do go back and forth. I do not begrudge anybody that feels either way. I'm not that heated of an opinion on these two things. But I will say with, with Kurt Schilling, I understand why people are like, look, this guy's messed up. And I've heard some other people say before, like, look, I get it. He rugged you the wrong way. He was an annoying person to talk to. I'm like, no, 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 no. This isn't Russell Westbrook. This isn't Eric Hosmer, who sometimes he was annoying with the media this year a little bit with when he acted about asked about the trade thing. It's like, yeah, maybe that rubs you the wrong way. Or Manny Machado, who sometimes reacts a little bit spicy to the media and stuff like that. That's rubbing you the wrong way. No, no, no. When you're collecting Nazi memorabilia and saying that not, uh, journalists should be hanged from trees and doing all this awful, awful stuff, transphobic, homophobic, racist comments, like, that's not just rubbing people the wrong way. It's very easy for oftentimes white people who say stuff like this just rubbed you the wrong way. It's like that's easy for you to say. So that's a quick rant on Kurt Schilling. So I think he should make it. I think that there's I don't think there's an easy way to do this. I think that bottom line is the Hall of Fame is messy and there's a lot of bad people in it and that you kind of have to just be like, 
all right, let's try and just keep this to baseball, your performance on the field. However, the counter that, in fairness, is being like, well, just because we did it back then doesn't mean we have to do it now. We evolve. That's what we do as a human species. We evolve and we say, hey, um, what's the word? Uh, now we're deciding that you have to be not a terrible human being in order to make the Hall of Fame, that we're actually going to take into account the character clause per se. The counter to that thing, which is where I have an issue with, is where? Do, what's the slippery slope there? Where do we determine the character stuff? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that like what uh, Kirk Schilling has done doesn't matter. It does. I really think that he's a disgraceful human being. He really is. Um, but it should be brought up that like that can be a slippery slope. Is it just going to be like, say, you someone voted for somebody that was was really on either side of the aisle right do we want to head down that direction i don't know do you want to just do criminal stuff yeah okay if you've done some criminal stuff that's really really bad you know what i'm saying but then it's like how many people in there haven't been found out? it just goes there's a lot of things so i'm very like 59 40 or what is it 51 49 on this i think it's that kurt schilling should be in the hall of fame i like what mina kaim said which is that you don't honor him though he's just in there and when you do the ceremonies and all that stuff it, it, like he doesn't get to go, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, right? Like if you're like an absolute heinous human being like Kurt Schilling, you don't get a speech. You don't even get like the giant honor of it. The only thing is you make it, you have your plaque and maybe you put the asterisk. I don't know. Uh, we're all talking about how you put asterisks over the Astros winning the World Series. Well, maybe you put the asterisk over certain people that made the Hall of Fame and say uh, the steroids thing. Or you say, hey, by the way, uh, kids never be like this guy. This guy's a disgrace to mankind. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's ways to go about this that I don't think is just everybody doesn't make it because then I think you get into a very tricky situation, in my opinion, again, that you end up in. But then again, I also don't begrudge people who are like, guess what? We evolve. You know what I mean? Tough. Oh, well, Ty Cobb made the Hall of Fame. It's like, okay, so because something bad happened in the 1920s, we're allowed to just have it happen again to make our feelings feel better about great baseball players. I don't think so. I don't think so. I feel like Elastigirl at the beginning of Incredibles. Save the laurel to the men? Leave the saving of the world to the men? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> or whatever. God, that movie's so good. I love that movie, damn it. I'm about to watch it after I finish recording this podcast. If I could. I went to bed at like 5 last night. Well, 4.30 to be exact. I woke up at like 9.30. Rough, rough times for your boy, ladies and gentlemen. But um, the last thing I want to say is this, guys, before we wind down... Thank you for making Locked On Padres your first listen every day. If you're watching the YouTube and wondering why I keep tapping my ears, it's because I have these wireless headphones in. Because I ripped in part, ripped to shreds my other headphones. I know. I'm such a buffoon. Uh, but now make your next listen, guys. You made your first listen, Locked On Padres. Now make your second listen, Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Arm Layton is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available on all platforms. And now in terms of the future of this pod, guys, let's quickly talk about it. Got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Multiple people that I may be having on the podcast, right? Ethan Smith of Lockdown Pirates to talk whatever the heck. Um, Stacey got Silius locked on Yankees to talk some some playoff stuff to talk about managers, which is something that definitely relates to uh, the Padres for sure. I just had a bunch of people last week with Mark Delucci. That was a really great chat that you guys should go listen to when it comes to like baseball economics and such. That was really, really good. Um, and then also going to be talking, hopefully, if this um, Mr. Ruben, Ruben, uh, a great name, by the way. I love the name Ruben. Um, gets hired as the Padres pitching coach, or maybe the – no, he's going to be the pitching coach. Yeah, like, uh, I, I'm really wondering who the heck they're bringing in as manager. Um, I might reach out to Lockdown Angels host um, – what's his name? Steve Granato to talk about um, these other candidates that were former Angels people with Brad Osmus being one of them and talk to him about, you know, what uh, how that would fit with the Padres, how he felt about them with the Angels. So a lot of crossovers this week for certain. I think is what you guys can expect. And like I said, Jeff Ellis of Lockdown Indians, if this Ruben hire does go through, will be on the pod as well. I've already talked to these guys and gals and what have you. Well, in this case, just gals. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Sorry about the little bit of the sluggishness of today's episode. It's a weird day. Also, stay tuned. We're going to be talking more about free agency stuff. My official free agency list, not yet ready. I don't want to reveal it just yet. I don't want to reveal it just yet, guys, because I want to see, first of all, just who the Padres hire as their manager. Then maybe I'll start talking about all that stuff. Let's have the World Series finish, guys, and we'll be recapping those games as well. And with that all being said, that about does it for today's edition of the Lockdown Padres podcast, the only pod that may be better than the Padres themselves. Remember to subscribe to the podcast from 
follow the YouTube, which is Locked On Padres on YouTube. It is in the description of the podcast as well. Follow myself or the Twitter account for the show on Twitter at LO underscore Padres. I'm so done. And at Javip. I know, uh, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. And until next time, stay safe. And my fire faithful homies, take care. Yeah.